Tonight, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he is confident that the measures put in place by the government to contain transmission of COVID-19 will bring the numbers down. JUTC to provide reduced service on weekends of curfew and Easter holiday period. On weekdays from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., we'll provide a normal service during those hours. However, we'll be providing a reduced or limited service on the weekends and on public holidays. Still tonight, Jamaica recorded 458 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday and one additional death, taking the total of confirmed cases now to 37,128 and the death toll to 546. And the opposition spokesperson on finance, planning and the public service, in response to the Minister of Finance's closing arguments at the 2021-22 budget debate, says that while Dr. Nigel Clark looks at numbers and averages, he is allegedly out of touch with the reality of the experiences of the Jamaican people. We get the requests as members of parliament for people simply not asking for money, but asking for food. The minister has shown in our view a callous disregard for the hardships that are being faced by the Jamaican people. Good evening. Jamaica recorded 458 new cases of COVID-19 yesterday and one additional death, taking the total of confirmed cases to 37,128 and the death toll now to 546. According to the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the latest fatality is a 75-year-old from St. Elizabeth. Meanwhile, the new cases consist of 251 females and 206 males, ranging in age from 3 months to 98 years. The gender of one of the new cases has been reported as under investigation. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew with 183 cases. St. Catherine recorded 100 cases, Clarendon 39, St. Elizabeth 21. Trelawney, 18. Portland recorded 17. Hanover and St. James both recorded 16 cases. Westmoreland recorded 14. Manchester, 12. St. Mary, 11. St. Thomas recorded 6 cases, while St. Anne recorded 5 cases. The island also recorded 121 recoveries, taking the total of recovered persons now to 16,739. Still making the news tonight, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he is confident that the measures put in place by the government to contain transmission of the coronavirus COVID-19 will bring the numbers down. Mr. Holness said that the measures will have a lag effect, noting that the impact of the measures will be seen in another two to three weeks as it takes several incubation cycles to see the impact. He noted that the restrictions that will start on the weekend will have a more immediate effect because they are stronger, but the real effect will be several weeks in advance. Mr. Holness was speaking during the sitting of the House of Representatives on Tuesday. The new measures including expanded weekend curfews beginning March 27 form part of provisions under the Disaster Risk Management Act to curtail the spread of COVID-19 in Jamaica. The revised weekend hours will begin at midday on Saturday, March 27, continue through to Sunday, March 28, and end at 5 a.m. on Monday, March 29. Meanwhile, opposition spokesperson on health, Dr. Marais Guy, says the measures announced by the Prime Minister come too late. He is suggesting that the best thing to do is a total lockdown. Based on the fact that the government has not given anything to assist the poor in this country, it is very likely that malnutrition might be might be needed to add to those NCDs for this commission to look at. 
The reality, ladies and gentlemen, is the health sector is in a worse situation than anyone can imagine. The measures that the Prime Minister announced to stem the increase in numbers, the spike in COVID cases, is late. I indicated to him that, as was said by me and I do by someone else and agreed by me, it is only postponing the agony a little further. And quite frankly, from a public health perspective, the best thing would have to be done is a lockdown. You cannot have a lockdown that is going to start this weekend and open up back next week and lock down the following week and open up back during the weekdays. Because the reality is that what you're doing is prolonging the, 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 the hardships of the people. The numbers as a result of the lockdown in terms of COVID positive cases will not decrease. We will not see the result of this decrease in the numbers for another two to three weeks. So basically, the country will have to tough it out in terms of the numbers. Dr. Guy pointed out that their recommendations on how to help manage the pandemic are yet to be taken on board by the government. We see where our nursing staff, our doctors are, are at the stage of burnout. And we would have expected yesterday in the closing the finance minister to say, we are going to do this more for health to alleviate some of the hardships there. But we have not seen and we have not heard that. And right now, it is painful for anyone to contemplate getting sick and needing to go to the hospital because there's no bed. You have to sit on that tent. You have to sit in the waiting area, which is crowded. And if you're fortunate to be admitted, you have to walk with your mattress or a sponge to lay on the ground. So ladies and gentlemen, we have indicated to the government some of the measures that we would want them to do in terms of the medical management which will alleviate some of this. But so far we have not been taken on board. We have indicated to the Prime Minister that we need more antigen testing to be done. We have indicated to the Prime Minister that he needs to form a, a comprehensive team of, of um, eminent doctors and scientists in this country to work alongside with the team at the Ministry of Health to get things going. But nothing like this has been taken on board. And of course, we have told him that the opposition stands ready to help this country. In other news tonight, the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, will be operating a reduced service for essential and frontline staff on the weekends of the curfew and during the Easter holiday period. Now, this follows recent adjustments to the curfew hours by the government to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Corporate communications manager Cecil Toms said the JUTC will provide normal service 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. on weekdays and reduced service on the weekends of the curfew and the Easter holiday period. Well, as you are aware, the government announced the changes to the curfew on Sunday, which we are obliged to follow. And in keeping with those changes, we have adjusted our operations. So on weekdays from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m., we'll provide a normal service during those hours. However, we'll be providing a reduced or limited service on the weekends and on public holidays. The schedules have been posted on our website and social media pages. We're encouraging commuters to view the schedules at jutc.gov.jm or they may view them on our Facebook at Jamaica Urban Transit Company or on Twitter at JUTCLTD. We encourage commuters to familiarize themselves with the schedules or should they have any queries or concerns, they may call our customer care team at 888-588-2287 or our reported hotline at 876-570-1789. Meanwhile, the corporate communications manager is also taking this opportunity to appeal to customers to continue to wear their masks for the entire length of their journey when using public transportation. I'd also like to take this opportunity to appeal to a commuters to you know continue to wear your mask 
we have noticed an appreciable increase in the number of persons wearing their masks, but we are concerned that when commuters board the bus, they either tend to take off the mask completely or simply pull it down to engage in chatter or, or some other thing. We are appealing to customers to desist from this practice, keep your mask on, ensuring that it covers your nose and your mouth, uh, wear it for the full length of your journey until you get home. We want you to keep safe and we want you to keep alive. Still making the news tonight, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, is advising the public that due to the recent changes to the Disaster Risk Management Act, the schedule for prison visits at the Central Police Station in Kingston has been amended. The new schedule is as follows, Saturday, March 27, Saturday, April 3, and Saturday, April 10. The visiting time has also been adjusted and visits will only be accommodated between the hours of 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. As we continue with the news tonight, the National Water Commission, NWC, is advising its customers that all its commercial offices will close at 12 p.m. tomorrow, March 26. Now, this closure is being done, the NWC says, based on the recent directive from Prime Minister Andrew Holness to help curb the spread of COVID-19 on the island. In a statement yesterday, NWC outlined that based on the curfew measures, the commercial offices will also be closed at noon on Thursday, April 1, 2021 and Friday, April 9, 2021. The public is also being reminded that all of NWC's offices will be closed on the upcoming public holidays, Good Friday, April 2 and Easter Monday, April 5. During the closures, customers may call 888-CALL-NWC, that's 888-225-5692 to access the automated self-serve option which provides disruption notices, bill balances and automated bank payments. They can also contact the NWC by web chat via the NWC's website www nwcjamaica.com. Customers are also being advised to email the NWC at customercare at nwc.com.jm. A pastor from St. Anne, who was recently seen on a social media platform lashing out at Prime Minister Andrew Holness and his administration for their alleged attack on the church, was taken into custody yesterday by the police. He is now being questioned on reasonable suspicion of creating public mischief. The pastor, who has been identified as Peter Chambers of Orange Hill in Brownstown, is said to be a leader at the Miracle Healing Deliverance Ministries. Now, in his lengthy video, he was overheard chastising Prime Minister Holness for allegedly going against the church. Chambers proclaimed that he was given a message from God to deliver to Prime Minister Holness, which stated that if he did not stop his attack on the church, God will be coming at him, his immediate family, and his administration with fire and even death. The police in St. Anne have since confirmed the arrest of the pastor, but were unable to say if he had been officially charged with a crime. Recently, Prime Minister Andrew Holness restricted every form of public gathering, including churches, as part of the enhanced measures under the Disaster Risk Management Act. Still tonight, Julian Robinson, spokesperson on finance, planning and the public service, in response to the Minister of Finance's closing arguments at the 2021 to 2022 budget debate during a post-budget discussion and media conference yesterday, said that while Dr. Nigel Clark looks at numbers and averages, he is allegedly out of touch with the reality of experiences of the Jamaican people. So between 2016 and now, people who have to buy chicken back, mackerel, rice, 
it is harder for these people to find money to buy the food. The money simply can't stretch. So while the minister spent a lot of time looking at numbers and averages, he simply is out of touch with the reality of the experiences of the Jamaican people. The reality of a single mother who is trying to feed her family. The reality of a pensioner who is on a fixed income. The reality of a security guard who works a 12-hour shift and still has to support his wife and his children. So when you take that reality, when you look at food prices across the board, the majority of Jamaicans have suffered increases in food prices way above what they would have gotten in terms of wage increases. Mr. Robinson also alleged that Dr. Clark, during his budget debate, dismissed data that does not suit his narrative. The minister went on to dismiss a study done by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which showed that there was a doubling of food insecurity in Jamaica. He said the study was theoretical and didn't represent measurements of real people on the ground. What I find very troubling is that when there is data that doesn't suit the minister's narrative, data from internationally reputable organizations, the minister simply dismisses this data because it doesn't suit his narrative. There are other times that he quotes from the very same IDB report that he claims um, has misrepresented Jamaica because that suits the narrative he wants at a particular time. I think it is dangerous. I think it is a sense of arrogance that we have organizations that have a long track record, not just in Jamaica, but globally, who cooperate with the government, who would have data from the Ministry of Finance and other agencies. And because the data is not to your liking, you seek to challenge and dismiss that data. Is the minister also dismissive of a recent study by UNICEF and CAPRI, which showed that 45% of households have had to cut back on food because they simply can't afford it? Most of these households have coped with the food shortages by either eating smaller amounts or eating fewer meals per day. That's another study. Is he now going to say this study is not real because it doesn't suit the narrative that he wants? The spokesperson on finance, planning, and the public service added that many Jamaicans are suffering from food poverty. The reality is that many Jamaicans are suffering from food poverty. And whether there is a formal study or not, our experiences on the ground confirm this. We get the requests as members of parliament for people simply not asking for money, but asking for food. The minister has shown, in our view, a callous disregard for the hardships that are being faced by the Jamaican people. On the issue of food prices, the minister has used data from the Consumer Affairs Commission to say that the prices I quoted were higher than what the Consumer Affairs Commission has, the increases. He didn't say there was no increase, but whether the data is from the CAC or not, the fact of the matter is that between 2016 and 2021, the increases in consumer prices were higher than our inflation rate and higher than any wage adjustments over that period. So Jamaicans who, and in particular, the poorest of Jamaicans who consume these items would be in a significantly worse off position now than they were five years ago. On his part, leader of the opposition, Mark Golding, said, Minister Clark's budget presentation on Tuesday did not address the severe hardship that is now visited on the people as a result of the sharpest economic decline in a year in the history of Jamaica. The minister closed the debate without any adjustments to the budget. The budget does not address the severe hardship that is now visited on the people as a result of the sharpest economic decline in a year in the history of Jamaica. The government has decided to tough it out, and it's the people who are going to suffer as a result of the stance that they have maintained. We had called for some additional expenditure, which we think is the best strategy for the country to get out of this recession, this deep, deep recession, and to cushion the blow that the people are suffering now. The government has ignored 
our position and the people cannot look to them for anything more than they had originally offered. Mr. Golding also pointed out some of the ways Jamaica has suffered during this pandemic. When you're in a downward spiral of economic contraction, you don't want what they call pro-cyclical policies, policies that make that worse or tend to exaggerate the effect of that downward spiral. You want counter-cyclical policies that have the effect of changing the dynamics in the economy and moving it back up. That is why most countries in the world are embarking on additional expenditures to counteract the effect that COVID has had on their economies. Our government has been very, very cautious and inadequate in its response to the deep contraction that Jamaica has suffered because they have basically carried on as if business, it's business as usual without any additional expenditure over and above what would be normally funded from the regular resources that they have. And we feel that this is the wrong approach because it is a pro-cyclical approach in a situation where counter-cyclical measures are required. And can the budget be amended? Yes, it can during the budget process. That is why there is a budget process. That is why there are discussions and so on. Uh, is it normally amended? Normally the amendments are small, minor amendments, but we are in an extraordinary situation and we had hoped that they would have revisited the expenditure package and looked at it again to make it more appropriate, more meaningful and more responsive to the real crisis that there is out there. But that was not to be. Now, in responding to the amendments to the Disaster Risk Management Act, Mr. Golding said that he is hopeful that the police will use their discretion and not impose penalties on persons who are prepared to modify their conduct when spoken to. I think the fines will be quite harsh for persons who of modest means, and I hope that the police will use their discretion and not seek to uh, impose penalties on people who are prepared to uh, modify their conduct if they're spoken to. These are very difficult times for people. People are under pressure and stress. They must be encouraged to comply, and I call on them, everybody, to respect the protocols, to wear your mask, to s avoid close personal contact, etc. But once you start to criminalize conduct, impose fines, impose prison sentences, you're going into a new dimension, and it requires, because these are measures that impact everyday living, it requires considerable discretion in how they are administered by the security forces. And I hope that they will administer these measures with due discretion, proportionality, and consideration for the pressures that people are under. Still making Mellow TV news, Chairman of the People's National Party's Disciplinary Committee, John Jr., has indicated that he received a letter in which a member of the party made allegations of a criminal nature against an officer of the party. Mr. Jr., in a statement released yesterday, said the party has sent the letter to the competent authorities in keeping with the requirements of the law. He has also recommended to the accuser that the matter be reported by her to the authorities. The committee chairman further stated that the allegations have not been sustainable and no evidence has been provided in support thereof, so he wishes to make it clear that no investigation has commenced within the party regarding the allegations towards the officer. He added that he is also aware that the officer has retained legal counsel to defend his reputation and the party will not speak further on the matter but will allow the law to take its course. The People's National Party's disciplinary committee statement comes following a report that attorneys representing the party's general secretary, Dr. Dayton Campbell, are demanding an apology and a retraction from two women who have leveled criminal allegations against him. 
Continuing with the news tonight, Leroy Russell Jr., otherwise called Tommy Lee Sparta, was sentenced to three years for illegal possession of firearm and two years for illegal possession of ammunition in the gun court division of the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston yesterday afternoon. He will serve three years as the sentences are to run concurrently. The dancehall entertainer was represented by Donahue Martin and Tom Tavares Finson QC. According to the police, the entertainer was arrested on December 14, 2020, after a vehicle he was traveling in was intercepted by members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. The men in the vehicle were searched and a 9mm Glock pistol with an extended magazine containing 18 rounds of ammunition was found in the dancehall artist's waistband. In news from Manchester, the police have charged the granddaughter of 84-year-old Advira Wilson Palmer for her murder. According to the police, the 27-year-old, whose given name at birth was Romelia Palkins, did a deed poll and changed her name to Shireen Bradbury. However, the police have not yet confirmed if there is proof of the deed poll in the possession of the authorities. Wilson Palmer's body was found at approximately 8 a.m. on Monday, lying in a chicken coop to the back of her premises with stab wounds by residents. The police were later alerted and the granddaughter was taken into custody. She was charged on Tuesday. The police have not yet confirmed when she will appear in court. And those are some of the stories making news. We will return with other stories as the Spanish town police are seeking the public's assistance to identify the motorist that claimed the life of an elderly man on Fairfield Boulevard in Spanish town, St. Catherine, yesterday in a hit and run accident. And 24-year-old Omar Troy Johnson, who is said to be a member of the St. James-based G-City gang, was sentenced to 15 years in prison when he appeared in the St. James Circuit Court yesterday. But first, we'll take a break and then it's over to Christopher Scott with the very latest in sports. <laughs> 